lesson number three. Today we're recreating pseudo selectors in JavaScript. We have the last of type, the first of type, last child, and not selectors today to deal with. It's super fun. I hope you're excited. I have a blast making these. This is just so much fun to write JavaScript that helps me learn more about CSS. Anyway, whatever. Preaching to the choir. Y'all are watching so much, you know, like mildly good. So here is the selector number one we're going to recreate, uh, recreate today. So we're going to recreate two. And look at how particularly like, I don't know, some of you might call this ugly or some of you might call this like extremely uh, usable or readable because it says if it's, if it's a direct descendant of the control, so we have a paragraph that's not the first of type and it's not the last of type, well, then it's pretty much everything in between. It's all the items in the middle. And then we have this selector here, which says last child. And it's last child, not last of type. So we're not going to have to filter. We're just going to have to query based on index. Right? Super cool stuff. Uh, all sounds like things the JavaScript can do, right? We've got a not selector, which sounds a lot like a filter. We have a first of type, which again sounds like a sounds like an adjective or like a, an, a property of the element. Uh, anyway, this is going to be really fun. Let's jump right in. We've got, uh, this is our control on the left. It's got an underline with a special color, and this item on the left is in all caps, and our item on the right just doesn't match, and it's driving me nuts. Let's solve it with JavaScript. Cha -cha -cha. Okay, so uh, let's do the same thing we did last time. I'm going to pseudocode a little bit, and then we'll uh, jump right into the problem. So we have like task one is we're going to... Okay, so we need the direct descendants again, so that's going to be a flat map. Boom. Uh, we're going to need the paragraph, so that's going to be a filter. Uh, we need a not first of type and not last of type. I solved this with a map. Now, uh, this is going to be a fun one in particular to watch if you like JavaScript, because you're probably not going to like the way I did it. So that's going to be fun. It should provoke you into trying it yourself. We'll see. Uh, and then we're going to filter on what we get back from that map and do our for each. Okay, so we're going to find our direct descendants, make sure they're paragraphs. We're going to find whether or not something is first uh, or last of type, then decide whether or not it should be knotted, and then for each over anything that's remaining. Right? Oh, so cool. Okay, task two. Task two is we have a direct descendant with a paragraph, so I can say uh, uh, flat, flat mat. Flat map, flap. Now, now I can't type it the right way. Flat map and filter, and okay, so that's what we got there. And last child, that sounds like another filter to me, right? So we're just going to make sure that the properties on the paragraphs that were matched, make sure it's the last in the uh, in the sibling stack, and then we'll save for each. Whew. Okay, let's get hacking. I'm going to do what we did last time. Oh, look at these. These are all indented a little bit. There we go. And we'll set a debugger right here. Shabow. Over here, console picks it up. Yeah, yeah. And we'll go here to the console. Let's clear that yellow stuff at the top, that warning. And uh, that would be browser sync doing some injection. And in here, we want to make sure we have access to experiments. And we do. This is, uh, this one's going to get crazy. Okay, so let's just do what we're, we're comfy doing right now, which is a flat map. All right, this has pretty much been in the past two episodes. Uh, and we're going to look at each experiment. And we're going to make sure the experiment, what we're interested in is the experiment children and we need to make sure that this is still something we can map and filter okay and in here we're going to filter based on the uh, uh ch let's see what did we do did we child or node name i think we did node child child oh yeah because these are children so i like trying to stick the name somewhere similar to the idea of the concept of the data that's being passed all right so now we're iterating over each child and uh what we're interested here in the children is that the child dot node name Node aim is equal to uh, p, right? Because that's what we're looking for. Okay, so here's all our paragraphs. Our task now is to make sure that we're only getting the one that isn't the first paragraph and isn't the last paragraph. So basically, by filtering based on node name, we've kind of already done the work to um, do first of type and last of type because the items that we're looking at are only of type paragraph right now. So this is even like a little bit of a shortcut that we're taking that the CSS compiler engine probably doesn't have the convenience of. Anyway, it's good for us. And I want to map in here. So my goal is I'm going to make a little bit of a payload. I'm going to look at each node. I'm going to look at the parent uh, and then look at its children. So, OK, think about this. As a node in uh, like a group in a div, I don't 
I don't necessarily know how many siblings are in my family. I don't. And as a programmer, now I can say Node, do you have an element to your left or to your right or things like that. It knows a little bit about who's near it, but it doesn't know about anything about the total. So what I need to do is I need to reach up into the parents node and look at the children. And then since I know the child that's in context and then I know all the children, I can go make an educated decision about whether or not this is the first or the last. So let's map what we're going to do is we're going to map over each node and we're going to return a payload that has identified the current node the first node and the last node and we'll write a filter chain that decides whether or not this node is in the middle or not Woo! okay so in here what we're doing now is we're going over each child right these are all paragraphs so for each child uh, we need to this is going to get we need to break out we, we can't keep doing this one in a chain like that and this child uh, the first thing, we're, okay, so we're doing something nutty in here, which I really like. I think it was really fun. So we're going to do some crazy destructuring. And we're going to destructure what we get back from the uh, node.parentElement.children. And it's not even just that that we're destructuring. We're also going to make sure that we filter who's in there and make sure that the child uh, in the child.node name is a paragraph. Okay, does that make sense? What we're doing is we're looking at all the parents' children that are paragraphs. It's very similar to what we've done, but now what we have is we have two contexts to manage where we didn't when we were doing our initial chain. Our initial chain was really naive. Everything uh, just kind of took the parameters it got and made a decision. This particular one needs to reach a little bit outside of, uh, it's not outside of its scope, it just needs to reach back into the parent. So we've already iterated over the parent to grab the children, but now each child needs to know anyway. We explained this earlier, that's what's happening. It looks a little redundant, but what comes uh, with this, which I think is really neat, is we're going to destructure this into the first element. So we're gonna take the zero index and we're gonna call it first. So we're renaming our destructured node here, which is really neat. And we're going to take length, which is uh, a property of our array here. And we're going to make sure that the uh, array, oh, here, should I just uh, indent that? Yeah, there we go. And so we're destructuring the length property off of the array and renaming it L for the, the cool feature that we can do here, which is so square bracket notation is how you can grab um, very dynamic keys off of an object, you know, whether or not it has spaces or it has dashes or things that necessarily JavaScript can't type. And we're going to put an equation in here today. And our equation is L minus 1 because we want the last child off of that. How about that trickery? And we're just going to return what we got here. This is funny. This is funny. I don't like it. There we go. Sure. Okay, and in here we're going to return a payload. And this particular payload is going to hold the node, the first node, and the last node. And uh, here, we could probably go ahead and hit enter here to make sure that what we're doing is what we think it is. Oh, look, node is not a name because we named it child. So let's just name this child right there. Nope, node is not defined. So it looks like I have node in here a few times, and I should have written, ah, yes, yeah, child. Oh, but now we have like a naming conflict. Okay, so let's go back to node then. Let's keep it as node. And this one is node, no node. Oh, look, and look, our eager evaluation even finished. <sighs> See, we should have known. Let's clear that and get back into our little state here because that was nice to have uh, eager eval. Oh, look, it, it lost my changes, node. Node, ha-ha. And if we hit enter here, we can see the payload that we've made. Our payload has the node that was in context the last element and the first element, and that is cool. Okay, so now that we have that, what we're ready to do is our final, well, let's do this, let's clear again, and then I can get back into this, yeah. So we have our map, and now we're ready to do a filter, because uh, what we want to do is we wanna know if the node, uh, let's see, let's start on a new, is the node equal to, or we need the node that's not equal to first, and the node that's not equal to last. Right? Ah, but what we have here is this is a payload. So our payload needs to be structured into node first and last. Hey, look, there it goes. Oh, oh, I lost my work. Oh, I lost it. Let's just write it again. Filter. This time we'll destructure right in our invocation. We got node first, last, 
take this, go like that. We're going to return uh, whether or not node is not equal to first and node is not equal to last. Aha! We have ourselves a payload, like in a, a collection, with our node as the one that we want to style. So let's add one last little step and say map. Uh, uh, let's see, this is going to be destructured again because we returned the payload and we got a node in there and that's what we're interested in is just the node so we'll return the node. And there is our P and that's our paragraph ready for us to style so let's grab it and return to somewhere where we can kind of read what's going on here. I'll set our debugger up for next one. Take this and paste and grab and just indent once and we're good to go. Okay, so what do we have here? Our experiments is grabbing all the direct descendants, grabbing the paragraphs that are direct descendants, mapping a new payload that grabs the first and last uh, siblings and itself. Then we can do an evaluation to see if itself is the first or last. Then we do an ev uh, we remap the out of the payload back into a, uh, a nice for each so that we can apply some styles. So let's just grab that little style here, apply for each. And this is going to be text decoration. Decoration. Boop, 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 boop. Underline. And text decoration color is a special value that I have right here. Boom. OK. And uh, I think we're ready to save that. I'm just going to comment out that debugger. I'm going to refresh in here. And we've got ourselves a colored underline. Yeah! Look at that chain it took. Look at how like the CSS uh, is so succinct in comparison. right? Paragraph. That's not the first of a type of paragraph, and it's not the last of a type of paragraph. Uh, all direct descendants. Like that one line is this whole chain. It's that whole chain. OK, let's write another one. This one is direct descendant, filtered based on paragraph, filtered based on it being the last child. This sounds much easier in comparison to what we just did. So we've got a flat map, a filter, a filter, and for each. Let's go do it in the browser. Because that is just that is just fun stuff. Okay, console. Well, I got that here. We'll clear it. Boom. And we have experiments, right? Experiments. Excellent. Okay, so our first task is to flat map flat map, little flapjack, uh, each experiment. We want to grab the experiment dot children, and we want to spread the results of that from a node list into a uh, array. Then we're going to filter based on each child. Having the child dot node name is equal to paragraph. All right, so now we have direct descendants that are all paragraphs. And we need to do a filter based on the child. Uh, and that child needs to have, um, let's see, what was it? It was next element sibling. We want all the elements that don't have a next element sibling. We want the ones that are just at the end here. And that, I think, gives us our final paragraph of boom, right? OK, let's grab that. Go back over to our code here. Take this. Shoop, 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 and grab our for each. Add a whole bunch of line breaks in here so I'm not working at the bottom of the screen. And for each style, we're going to give a text transform today. Text transform, and that is uppercase. Excellent. Let's go back over here and how'd it go? Let's grab our. Console. So we, let's just do command backslash to uh, it's the same thing as play. Go back to our console, clear it, check. It's not uppercase. It's not uppercase. What did we do wrong? So the text transform, text transform. We grabbed. It's not the next. Does not have an next element sibling. Maybe I just needed to refresh. I did. Woohoo! That's always nice when you're like, uh, what happened? I thought it was right, and then you're like, ooh, maybe I need to refresh the code. Did you try turning it off and on? on? <laughs> Did you try turning it off and on again? Uh, well, there you have it, folks. We have just recreated four, well, is it five? Five, one, two, three, no, that's four. Four different pseudo selectors with JavaScript 
the first of which turned out to be quite hairy as we had to do some interesting things like this one had that each particular node needed to reach up into its parent to see if it had uh, so it had the full context of the family and it could decide whether or not it was the first or last <laughs> right uh, and then the last one just needed to see if it was the last child that's all it really cared about and that one ended up being pretty easy. We flat map again to get the children, direct descendants. We filter based on the paragraph, and we make sure that it has no next sibling, which means it's the last in the set of elements, and that gives us our match. And up here, we went through, and we got all the direct descendants. We filtered, made sure that they were paragraph type. We made a map. So what we did is we, we converted each node to a payload, and we returned a payload instead, which had the current context, the first and the last element, so that we could filter on all those payloads to make sure that we only had the payloads that had a node that was not the first and not the last. Then we remapped that payload back into a node so that we could just send it to our style function like we've been doing all along. And this is done. We are complete for the day. I am having a crazy blast building these things. I don't know about you guys, but that was really nuts, right? Oh, I mean, it's not that nuts, but uh, flat map and filter and map, all of these things chaining together as we convert from payloads and back to nodes or, or HTML collections and node lists back to arrays. We're kind of doing all this little inline ES6 shorthand conversion, boom, 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 and learning a whole bunch about CSS. One of my favorite things about this particular exercise is just how succinct CSS handles it. It almost reads like English, and to think about how long it took someone to create a declarative language that could be as powerful as like things that JavaScript can do. So rad, uh, and I wanna recap really quick today. I heard somebody mention that uh, they, they compared two things, and it wasn't even in developer context, but they said, oh yeah, that's like noun versus verb. I've heard uh, in terms of like programming on the web that CSS is what you want and JavaScript is how you want it. What sure sounds a lot like a noun, and how sounds a lot like a verb. So I kind of uh, took those to heart a little bit and, and was pondering them. And I'm like, yeah, CSS is kind of like a noun. That might be why, why it's so um, easy to get into is because it's describing things in your world. These are nouns. You can it, They're easy to describe and they're easy to tell what you want and they're easy to give adjectives to. Whereas verbs and describing the actions, that is much harder. Things that are event-based and have uh, effects on other effects and have effects on other effects. So interesting, right? CSS being the noun-ish uh, and JavaScript being your verb. I was also thinking of it uh, as I expanded more that the HTML might actually be closer to your noun. Uh, JavaScript definitely being your verbs, but that CSS is more of your adjectives. Right, because your noun could be like a div or a chair. This is a thing, it holds content, it's just not painted. And so you could come in with like adjectives and adverbs. Well, I don't think adverbs, but adjectives that uh, help describe the object in, in context. Anyway, that was just a weird little ending rant on the end of there about nouns, verbs, and adjectives and how they compare to the what and the how and JavaScript and just uh, our web world. Anyway, uh, thanks for following along this video. The next one, I think we're busting out of the direct descendants and we're finally gonna do some recursion. Uh, be excited, it's good stuff. Thanks for watching. As always, comment, make your own videos, tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like, fork the code, find it on GitHub, and boom! I'll see y'all later. Bye.